The future is bright. Let's talk about that. It is unwritten, ladies and gentlemen. We've had an incredible year so far, I'm proud to say. Despite missing some goals, we've had our biggest year yet in revenue and profit. Thank you for all of you. A little clap. We've brought on amazing new clients and new team members. We've celebrated and partied hard. However, all is not good. And we need to be very, very aware of this. We have serious business vulnerabilities. See, in January, when I put this together, it was the beginning of the year. Coming into the new year, I had said something to myself. I said, Cal, I don't want to get smarter. I want to get more wise. And so a lot of our weaknesses and threats that we examined in January were based on the knowledge and information and wisdom that we had then. It's been, what, nine months since then. And there's a lot of new information that has come. And that's why I say all is not good, because we do have serious, not kind of, we have serious vulnerabilities as a business. And these vulnerabilities make us fragile to changes in the time and weather. One freak accident, we're gone. This is the thing that I really want to drive home. If there's any homework, this is the homework. You need to take good notes on this. Start really thinking about what it is that's up here. One freak accident, we're gone. Blindness in seeing the inevitable will be our demise. Our inability to have vision and see the dangers that are coming at us and that we're meeting, we're going at them and they're coming at us. Our inability to see it or maybe our desire not to see it will be our doom. Summer is over, ladies and gentlemen. And if you've seen me been freaking out a little bit on edge, it's because of, the, because of this. I am the type of person that when, and Trev, you are too, <laughs> is when we get along, when things are going smoothly, we're looking around like this is fucked up. Something is going to happen because it does. I have a personal belief that it's better to get punched by life on a daily basis and know what you're up against than be skipping and having all these wonderful experiences and profit and growth and you're walking around a corner and around the corner is the enemy, is the monster and they've been waiting, they've been working out. I would rather know every day this is the problem I'm trying to solve than be in this fictitious lie that everything is fine and dandy and not know what is coming up ahead of me. And that's where we are. The fact that things have been going smooth and wonderful and pretty and it's all sunshines and dandelions and flowers, this is not reality. There is a handful of companies right now, right now, our clients, that we're going to write off as bad debt this year. Not because they don't want to pay us, because they're going to go bankrupt. And this is a conversation that the leadership team and I need to have. There's nothing we can do. If anybody knows Thomas Cook, they're a 178-year-old company. They just went bankrupt. 178 year old company. Everybody and their mom that knows anything about economics can tell you we've had a bull run, an unprecedented bull run in the economy. We're not in safe times. This is the roaring 20s in our life. There were massive amounts of millionaires that were created in the roaring 20s. And when that stock market dropped, you have no idea how many multimillionaires committed suicide within 24 hours. People got wiped out. If you know anything about the book Anti-Fragile, they talk about it. It's called the Black, Black Swan event. I talk about it lately. Are you a turkey? What is it to be a turkey? You know what it is to be a turkey? Life is great. The farmer is feeding you. You're judging your future. You're predicting your future based on your past. Life is wonderful. You know who the farmer is? Life. Life is the farmer. 
And we're the fucking turkey. We're looking backwards and saying, life is beautiful. This is great. Until the day comes where the farmer's hungry and it's time to chop your head off. Who's going to be the first to say, you know, we lost our biggest client. No one wants to spend money on their marketing. You know what? I'm willing to take a pay cut so the team can survive. Who's willing to do that? These are inevitables. These are things that happen. Summer is over. We don't know when that date is. But we must assume that that date is coming. Winter is here. You have to assume that winter is here. What will grow in spring and flourish next summer is directly based on the actions of us in the next few months. We need to move forward and grow and strengthen ourselves and profit before this collapse happens. So when it does, the company is not in a situation where we need to make hard decisions and say, who do we have to fire and who do we have to keep because we can't afford it. We need to be in a position to say, okay, we knew this was coming. We got a year. Let's ride it out. Let's promote ourselves more while everyone's promoting themselves less. Let's buy stocks now when they're cheap. Let's buy property now when it's free. Or are we going to be in a situation where we're fucked like the rest of the planet? Right? It wasn't too long ago, the 2008-2009 financial crash. Millions of people lost everything they had. 10 to 20% a year, 10 to 20% a year, 10 to 20% a year. That's amazing. You're looking at your bank account, 10 to 20% a year. You see our growth, 10 to 20% a year. It only takes one year that everything drops 80% and everything that you accumulated over the last 10, 20, 50, 100 years is now worthless. And this has not happened once or twice. This is cyclical. Everything that we accumulate could literally die in one shot. We have to assume that that day is coming and we need to protect ourselves. So the question that you need to ask, what's going to happen when hundreds, thousands of companies don't want to spend a nickel on their marketing and nobody wants to hire a designer, nobody wants to hire a writer, nobody wants to put money in their advertising? I want you to think about that. And what that means for you, your loved ones, dependencies you have, your rent, your future goals, your trips, your travels, and the team. I want each of you to take your CEO hat. Each of you have one. I'm willing to sit this one out. If you're willing to be the CEO, you can be the CEO. The only thing is, if you're the CEO, you need to take the first fall, be first in line, and you need to make sure that everybody is good. Everybody here has the capacity to run their own life. You're all the CEO of your own life, so you need to take that CEO hat and put it on, and you need to now ask, as the captain of the Pixel Dreams ship, what are you gonna do? Your duty over the weekend is to prepare a one-page overview report. There is no guideline on how to do this. There needs to be no guideline. This is just your thinking. It doesn't need to be a 10-page document. It's whatever you want. It could be a few notes. It could be a full page. I want you to envision a better future. I want you to identify the vulnerabilities we have as a business. And I want you to draft a preliminary plan. Monday afternoon, we will be reviewing each of your reports, sharing my thoughts and the leadership team's thoughts on our next actions for Q4, and then developing concrete goals for 2019 Q4, debating them, figuring out how we're going to achieve them. And that's it. Fire!